I'm glad you could join me today. I'm in Jeremiah's prophecy at the very beginning, chapter 1. And in this particular passage, God gives the call to Jeremiah of what he is supposed to be doing and what his, uh, what his ministry will be during the time that he is preaching and prophesying. Now, it's very interesting. Our English translations are uh, insufficient to understand all that God is saying. For the Lord uses the, uh, the, the, the idioms and the colloquialisms of a particular people just as he does, just as we would speak as well. But uh, I'm grateful for the uh, insights of the editors who have translated from Hebrew to English in this case, or in the New Testament, Greek to English, because I'm not a Greek scholar and neither am I a Hebrew scholar. I've studied them some, but uh, not enough to really say that I understand them. But here in, in chapter 1 of Jeremiah, Jeremiah is given a word from the Lord. It says, And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see an almond branch. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. Now that doesn't seem to be connected in the English, but if you were reading the Hebrew, uh, the, the word that means almond is a very similar word, perhaps similar sounding, to the word watching. And this is the, this is the play on words, the uh, colloquialism, the idiom that God is using in order to speak to Jeremiah. Now, it should give us comfort, first of all, to know that he speaks in our vernacular. He, he says what, the things in the ways that we would understand them, just as he did with Jeremiah. But that's not ultimately what my, my point is here. Here, the point is that he's watching over his word. The scripture says, we just read in Isaiah chapter 55, that his word never returns empty. It always accomplishes what he intends for it. And really, that's the foundation of this particular devotional blog, this video blog, You'll notice that I never uh, get off into my own ideas unless, of course, they are prompted by the scripture itself. And I've said often, not only here but in my preaching as well, that I don't have anything of substance and importance to say. The only thing that I can do is to relate accurately the word of God. And if I do that, then he's faithful to use that. And that's what he's saying here to Jeremiah. I'm watching over my word to fulfill it, to do it. He will always do that. Once more, I say to you that we may not fully understand every part of, uh, uh, of the scripture. Remember that the scripture was written over a period of 1,500 years, and none of those in the modern era in which we live. And in that 1,500 years, there were multiple cultures that, uh, that the scripture was written in. It was not just through Moses. It was not just by people who were, uh, who were a part of the Jewish culture or the Hebrew culture, but it was written by people who resided in places like Babylon, people who resided in places like Persia, if you think of the book of Esther. Uh, you, there are those that are written uh, to the, uh, and from the people who were living in Palestine, the lion's share of them. But the reality is that the Lord takes his word in whatever culture it may be, and he will fulfill it. And we need to understand that we can't probably fully grasp every culture that way. But it is our duty. It is what we are called to do to dig in and to find out what was he trying to say to the people at that particular time, because when we understand that, we know what he's trying to say to us. What he was saying to Jeremiah here is true today. 
Now, he may not say it in exactly the same way today, but he's saying the same thing. Jeremiah needed to understand that it was a fulfillment of God's word that was going to carry him through all of his ministry. It was that he was to make sure that he was faithful to the words of Scripture. And when Jeremiah did that, God was faithful to fulfill that. And the same thing is true for you and me. We need to recognize that in this book, despite all of the objections of, of modern science and critical thinking, this book has power to change and to transform your life and mine. And he'll do that. And the Lord is watching over his word to perform it. Father, we ask you to do that in this particular day, in my life, in the life of everyone who hears this video blog. I ask that you would give to us insight and wisdom I pray that we might obey what you are saying to us and that we would listen carefully to your voice. For it's your voice that overrides everything else. And we pray, Father, that that still, small voice of the Holy Spirit speaking through the Scripture will drown out all of the cacophony of noise that is in this world today. So help us and strengthen us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful day.